Hi, I'm, hi, my name's Mark, I'm 20 years old from Glasgow, uh, and like the rest of the world now, I am spending my whole life um, within the four walls of my house as we're all tra trapped in uh, isolation um, during yeah. the lockdown, but hopefully we'll get uh, progress made soon and, uh, every and the world can kind of start to get on its feet away from uh, the coronavirus. It's yeah. an awful thing to see so many people suffering and stuff like that and you can only extend your um your heart just to extend all of your feelings out and your deepest sympathies out for uh, those that have sadly um, lost their lives and their yeah. families yeah it's tragic the people that have been affected by it um i think this is maybe like four and a half weeks or five weeks or something yeah isolation yeah, yeah you're right something al yeah. something along those lines about yeah certainly about certainly crossed a significant period of time yeah. anyway life normality of life seems a distant memory <laughs> yeah how are you finding say, it how are you finding this again with being the 24 7 you kind of there's i've actually had quite a, a good time because i'm working from home away mm. back when i just I, I, I sort of run in the mill admin job mm. away from my time at uni um, and I would send home a laptop to work, just like many other people that maybe are even watching this will be, have been sent home and uh, laptops to work from home. Yeah. So working life's been brought into the house, and then after that, it, it's just that opportunity to spend time with family, been watching back old football games, watching back Netflix series, um, mm. just played just playing with PlayStation and stuff like that, just doing things with the family and stuff like that. But at least the weather's turning better anyway, so we can yeah, sit yeah. out back and stuff like That's that fair. now and enjoy that it's actually crazy i feel like only now do we realize how many distractions we have like netflix and stuff like that there's so many exactly. things we can dive into mm -hmm. um but yeah this episode is kind of like all based around football football culture football communities and stuff like that um, that's right yeah so you are a celtic supporter and you've yes. always been a celtic supporter yes that's uh it's more of a sort of Without, I don't want to sound sort of you'd say arty farty, but it's a way of life, kind of. You're born, of born, born, born into the tradition. You don't, it's not one of the, it's not these sort of like, it's not a sort of thing you can just be a, a Celtic fan one minute and be one and not be one the next. You're a, you're a Celtic fan for life, and, and, and that's it. You just, you're just born into it, and that's just your ways. Hope right. your whole fam, a lot of family are as well. Like, certainly for my family, like. The vast majority of my, of my um, family are all Celtic fans. Really? Um, yeah. So that's interesting you say that. Like, as I said before, I know nothing about football. I know nothing about mm -hmm. the culture of it, really. I'm pretty naive. So I feel like this episode is going to be probably the most eye opening episode because I don't know much about this, even though it's like mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by it in a sense. Yeah. I really, I've kind of kept naive to it in a sense as well. Um, but yeah, you said most of your family are uh, Celtic supporters. So like, yes. has it kind of kept um, like in the family in a sense? Do you have any like non-Celtic supporters in your family? Yeah, well, it's not. It's not really a, a when you turn around and say, "Oh, but it's a, it can completely be like kept in the family." Of course, as I said, my my grand my grandpa actually was um, was brought up um, uh, was brought up a, a, Rang a Rangers fan, but. Uh, he married my gran, who's a mass, massive, massive Celtic fan, and my 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 mum, who's no longer with us, uh, God rest her. She was a she massive Celtic fan. My dad's been brought up a massive, uh, for, has, has always been a massive Celtic fan, and he's passed his traditions down down to me uh, over the down to me, and I'm that's it, just born and sort born and bred a Celtic fan, and I couldn't be happier, especially at the. At the minute, with all the success, but even through the hard times, um, I've always stuck by the team. I always go to go to games whenever I, I can. I've been a season ticket holder for about eighteen years now at Celtic Park. Um, so my dad was taking me all the way back when I was uh, when I was just learning, just able to walk, walk myself and stuff like that. He, he was taking me, and he's got all the old season books in the house to uh, to prove it because I actually wanted to to see for myself a few years ago. Um, no, no, it's not me. No, I don't want to say disbelieving, but I just wanted to say, wow, that's really weird that I was two years of age and actually going to all these games and all oh, this. The season books are all there, and yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just like, ah, wow. It just makes it just makes me feel really proud to be a Celtic fan, and I've just you just see all the sort of um, I've got hundreds of members Billy. I've been to European trips away to see Celtic, but these are all things that we can delve in as the conversation uh, rolls on a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So just the way you're saying that, you like you really are talking about it like as a way of life, which is really interesting to me. Um, so like, what, what is it like? Is it sort of like, like what's the uh, enticing part? Is it that it kind of like adds a purpose to things, or what is that? It's it gets referred to a lot of as the Celtic family, where hmm. supporters will look out for each other. You see that a lot of sort of communities and Facebook, a lot of communities and pubs and stuff like that. There's certain pubs that are like our Celtic pubs and Rangers pubs. There's certain there's certain there's certain pubs that, that, that it's really it's weird. That it's, if you know, if you need to be like sort of and to understand or try and sort yeah. of explain it, but you just go, you look at that pub and go, that pub is that pub's a Celtic pub. So right. Celtic fans are drinking it. And it's sort of those sort of communities, and it's more than the football's great, and it's it's obviously that's the big enticing factor. We all love football anyway, but it's just your team. It's just what you've been brought up with. You just mm. really, really that it's just it's, it's just a that's the sort of way of life you're brought up. With. You you actually it's hurting me really, really now that we've no football now during lockdown. It's a really big part. It's it's a really big part of so many people's lives um, yeah. up and down the world. Never mind up and down the country. Up and down through the four corners of the world, there's so many people that depend, that are just love football, it's more than just play, it's just that sort of thing, you know, that you're kind of immersed, you're immersed within it, if that sort of makes sense, and that's the sort of just way for me, I just, uh, it's just a sort of, I love and the football, the community, the, just the sort of going to watch, going to watch the team, and then even scaling it back to me, um, just playing myself and coaching myself, um, I just really, really enjoy it. Yeah. So, like, when you're talking about, like, there's uh, pubs and stuff like that that are completely based around this, like, sport where one team, like, one team supporters will go. Mm -hmm. Is that something that other sports really have where it's, like, a specific team's pub kind of thing? No, absolutely not. Just the, only way, the only way you would have it is, I'm trying to maybe say, like, I don't, I'll use rugby as an example because that's the sport that I think of where you would say, like, the, it's sort of, the, the, I'll say the Glasgow Warrior, or Warriors would maybe have, the only sort of pub they would have base for them would be like a, say like a, a rugby club. Would you, would you ever right. make a party at like a rugby club? Yeah, yeah. That sort of would be their pub. It would be right. people who frequent and go to the rugby, they would do that. But you've got, within Glasgow, you can have, so you can have two Celtic pubs in the same street, <laughs> or the same sort of main, main street, if you like. Yeah, sort yeah. of, um, there's a there's two ex two examples I can use. There's two pubs in Rutherglen. I don't know if you know where Rutherglen yeah, is, yeah. but it's close to Campus Lang. And there's a pub called Chapman's at the top of Rutherglen, which is a quite a good Celtic pub. And then there's a pub further down called The Vogue, which is a massive Celtic pub. And you've got supporters buses, supporters buses leave, supporters um, buses leave for these for these. Um, for these places, these pubs as well, you've got hundreds of buses that they go to away games, and that's another right. community in itself. There's just so many communities within within football, especially within Celtic. Uh, Celtic. This is going to sound like a, a stupid question to you, right? But an away game is that just a game that's not at like your like yeah, official I, club I, uh, I, or I, stadium? I, I, right. I, okay. I, I, it's a domestic away game. You've got a European away, which is away in European competition. They are. They are the, the now the, 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 some of the best days of my life. Going like just to explore other cities and the night, the, the culture, the part, the, the part, just the part in between all our fans. It's great mm. to go and mix with other fans as well. It hasn't always been positive. Um, Lazio was brings that to mind. We went to Rome. We won two one away in Rome. Uh, I, I was there. There was ten thousand in our allocation. We get given or something Celtic allocation, and we went. And but the. Lazio fans were out to get us. It was like we had to get specially bus to the game and stuff like that. They, they, these are people that like, they don't really mess about. They were out to, to get us and stuff like that. And it's just a sort of football casuals thing. It's like people that you get factions of teams that just go and fight with each other. Right. And it, that's taken to another level in certain countries. And that was an example of it. But it seems like sometimes football is heavily associated with like, like youth violence. Is that uh, something that you'll come across? Uh, I have seen things. I've seen uh, things at football at, at games before. Uh -huh. I've never, never personally, thankful, uh, thankfully, touched. Uh, still touch wood that doesn't occur. That I haven't actually had to. I've never been injured through football. Never really been involved in any of it. It's kind of um, 
it's it's one of the ones you say if you go looking for trouble, it'll find you. Mm, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I just when I go to the games, you go you go and enjoy the game. You go back to the pub with your pals after it. But um, I have seen I have seen things in the past. Um, just sort of um, just sort of like scrap, just kind of things like that before and stuff. But it's usually it's usually um, not. Not to like sort of at the game, it's like after the game, away from the ground where right. these things kind of take place. Because when you're at the game, if you've ever been, I, I don't know if you've been before uh, uh, yeah. any game, but there's hundred the police presence at football games is um, is frightening. There's so many right. uh, police officers and um, and sort of just you, easy easy arrest if you do that. And these you're not looking, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking to obviously for to fight and then it'll. They'll, they'll get away with it kind of thing. So interesting. Um, I mean, I don't want to just focus on all like the sort of like negative things of football. What no, are some no, of the positive no, things? Like, tell me some of the good things that come from football. Well, I'll tell you some of the good things that come from football is it unites everybody in the world um, because no matter wh- no matter where you go, you'll always see that there'll be fo- there's football is yeah. at, the heart, at the heart of communities. You've got so many different peoples with so many different opinions and it's taken off of the off of where it's at grounds and on the TV, and it's taken into to pubs and clubs and houses, and it fosters sort of debate and and chat and, and fo- sort of like, sort of debate and football chat and stuff like that. It's not really. Uh, it's just such unites everybody yeah. so much, and like people really just look forward to football season starting. And I watch, I will we'll watch games from anywhere in the world, from anywhere in the world. Like you, um, you watch. I can, you can sit all day. You have early games from England, then you'll have later games in the night from Germany, Spain, Italy, France, and then when it comes to the internationals, I, it's a lot of the time people go, or oh, the club football stops, so it's an international break. So your clubs are like Celtic Rangers, mm-hmm. Hearts. Ha- ha- Hearts, Hibs, Liverpool, Arsenal, more like obviously English one, Man United, Barcelona, etc. Right? right, that's your clubs. Then you've got internationals, are Scotland, England, the, the countries. Do right, right. so you go and represent your country? But a lot of people don't like the internationals. It's not looked on very favourably at times because it's sort of seen as being born. But UEFA and FIFA, to their credit, have tried to instil new tournaments and stuff like that to make it more interesting. But the two biggest, two, the two big tournaments internationally are the Euros. And um, and which is the European Championships and the World Cup, the big South American one is the um, obvious. Um, that's terrible. Mind blank. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, terrible. Mind. Don't worry. Mind I'm blank. Sorry. Yeah, so the, 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 the Copa, the Copa America. That's terrible. Yes, you've, <laughs> got, the, you've got the Copa America in South in South America, um, and you've got the um, the African Cup of Nations in Africa, kind of thing. But that's yeah. your um, that's your sort of your sort of uh, big ones, like international internationally, and then you go on and uh, and the probably one of the most prestigious things a footballer is to win the World Cup, and those that have been lucky enough to do it, I say that that's just it's it's one of the, the pinnacles of their career, and it's it brings everyone together because the whole world stops to watch it whenever right. it's on, no matter what games you watch, every single game. Yeah. Um, why are sort of national teams or national football not as uh, why do people not find it as interesting as like club based like football I think it's because it's your it's, I, don't, I don't know it's just sort of a, I think it's a kind of um, a bit less intimate a bit less I, yes, but it's, I, it's a UK opinion kind of that the international breaks a bit like I think other countries kind of Come together and I don't know. Seem to be a di- different different opinions will exist within the whole world, but mm. certainly here it's because you just want to get back to your domestic season. You want to get back to Celtic. You just want to get back away from just this international break. You would rather it wasn't there. But obviously in Scotland, probably the reason why people don't look forward to international breaks is we haven't qualified for a tournament in twenty two years. So um, since the nineteen ninety eight World Cup, so. That's that. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I feel like you could kind of draw parallels between like someone who's really, really into music is kind of like someone who's really, really into football. Like they would travel the world to go see gigs and, and festivals and stuff like that. It's kind of like similar in that respect. Um, but 
I guess I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I feel like it's so interesting to feel like to know that you're like going and following one team, like uh-huh. the same people every time, and then see how they interact with another team and how they like how it all kind of works and the mechanics of it. It's quite fascinating. So you um, you've always been into football. Yeah, ever ever since I was younger, um, I've always been um, and and football. I played football from a very young age, and I've coached football now for uh, years, a few years, for some years as well. So uh, it's always been a thing that's played a part in my life. Obviously, more personal level away from uh, from going and supporting Celtic. Mm. Me playing, I've played, uh, got to the Scottish Cup semi final, played, and I've represented the region down against uh, down in Newcastle against Sunderland. And countless brilliant memories. Um, done the done the double with the school, which was winning to winning a trof- winning to basically um, two different trophies in the right. same year. Right, um, yeah. It was a league and cup double. We done um, uh, we did sorry, so we did a league and cup double. It's represented um, the region. Just plenty of fond memories. Just it's more than the bonding and making memories. And yeah. as a as a coach, I'm obviously still young now, so I've been. Uh, coaching for I've been involved in football um, from not uh, coaching while I'm playing as well, and now just kind of fully only coaching and kind of playing five aside with my friends and my pals yeah. and stuff like that, seven aside my pals and um, and no, it's really really great. Again, we've won five we've won five tournaments as well, which has been magic. Which is another sort of side that's um, more small sided game, but it's just kind of when you're not really the full eleven aside, but it's it's still a good a good laugh and. Uh, to the uh, played in a a lot of good tournaments at, at that sort of thing as well. So again, it's just a thing that's been a really really big part of my life, and I I love it, and I'll continue to play football until I'm I can't physically move anymore. One of my I always play just every week. Obviously not the now with us carry on being yeah. in there, but certainly before we stopped, I was between playing and. Um, sort of training and doing other things as well. I was active in football about for five five or six days a week. Right. So um which uh, when you've got the eating and um drinking habits that I have um <laughs> is quite good to keep a sort of healthy balance. I think I I I dare imagine what size I would be had I <laughs> decided that I didn't uh, like to play f- that I didn't play I didn't play football I'd probably be built with a side of the house but <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then, you, then you have it um, so I, that's the sort of story about about that yeah honestly I, I, this is like I don't know if I'm making it clear how interested I am right now because I just love hearing people talk about things they're really passionate about and you, you're clearly really passionate about it so <clears> I'm <throat> loving this um, so do you want to jump into like maybe more about religion do you think it's important to be religious to be a Celtic supporter or do you think it's important to be a Celtic supporter if you're religious or do you think there's any correlation well, there? A lot of people, um, uh, there is a lot of folk that really aren't religious. Like, being a Celtic fan doesn't mean you need to turn up to Mass every Sunday right. kind of thing. Yeah. It's just the sort of thing that you went to a Catholic, it's more to do with the schools, you went to a Catholic school, you were christened, you made your first communion, sort of um, like reconciliation, blah, 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 all your sacraments, if you like, when you're yeah. a, a kind of, you're Catholic, but being a Celtic fan doesn't mean you need to turn up to Mass every Sunday. Obviously, a lot of people do, and it's, it's tradition and stuff like that, but you could argue that you've got plenty of tradition in like South America. Like, um, you wouldn't have Boca Juniors going to Mass before every single Copa America match, but they just go to Mass as a part of the, the community. So mm. it's not really a support. You have to be you have to be uh, religious to um, go and see Celtic all the time. That would, of course, be absurd to think that. You would probably maybe be wrong to think that. But <laughs> right. I'm just saying that the the that but you would you would say that the majority of or a lot of the Celt- the Celtic families are sort of Catholic based families, if that sense. Right, but yeah. Celtic finds itself in being a club open to all. So no matter if you're Catholic, if you're Christ- Christian, which takes in Catholic Protestant, if you're um, if you're Muslim. Sikh, Buddhist, whatever, mm. you would be welcome through the gates of Celtic Park, and that's a, that actually makes me really proud as a club as well. That you don't, right. doesn't matter who, who you have at the club, you're um, you they're always made to feel very, very welcome, and that's a, a sort of a very, very good perk of the club. It's said before every game, uh, Celt- it's basically goes Celtic was established in 1888 as a club open to all. Right. We say that before every game. I mean, I, I respect that. That sounds good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That sounds perfect. 
Um, mm. So do you have any friends that aren't Celtic supporters for other teams? Ah, I, have, I do, of course. Yeah. Um, um, it's great because it gives you a different dynamic. Usually, well, maybe not usually you agree with everything with Celtic fans, but certainly you'll agree on big points. But mm. if you have a fan, and I've got uh, pals that are not that are only Rangers fans, I have friends, pals that are impartial, that are Hamilton Aki's fans and Murrowbeak fans and mm. stuff like that as well. So you get a, a flavour for everybody else, and they'll say, about, about, what about us if you're having a debate, or what about this, what about that? Things that they'll maybe accuse you of being biased for. Uh, which they're going to do that anyway. It's difficult being at the top of the tree. You've got everybody shooting at you all the time. When you're a Celtic fan, you've got everybody else trying to shoot at you. But when you've got Rangers fans sort of, for some of the, for stop giving their opinion, which the majority of the time I think is absolute nonsense anyway, um, they, um, especially in recent times with certain, having to do investigations into the SPL and stuff like that, I think is absolutely ludicrous. But I have no idea what the SPL it's, is. It's clutching its straw. It's basically, they obviously we're having to figure out what's going to happen with the leagues due to the coronavirus right. pandemic, right? So what happened is, uh, all the clubs voted about a resolution, but what happened, what happened actually came out in the investigation today, right, because it had uh, been read, was that Dundee, um, Dundee FC... Um, who um, shot corner are from Dundee um, <laughs> <laughs> tried to submit tried to submit their, their vote uh, but it didn't actually get received by the SPL it went into a quarantined mailbox which was controlled by a third party so nobody in there uh, the, 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 there was the accusations coming out of Rangers that were, that, uh, were accusing the, uh, they were accusing the SPFL of basically diddling the votes if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Their but, but it was proven by an independent investigator which Rangers asked for today which uh, that they um, that it was untrue. Uh, basically, there was no there was no sort of uh, wrongdoing on the SP in the SPFL um, on their sort of board. And it's actually the, the, it's this might be difficult for if you don't really into football, you understand the SFA, the Scottish Football Association. Right. They're the sort of association, but the SPFL are the Scottish Professional Football League. They're in charge of the league, and they were the ones that were getting the sort of flack because they're supposed right. to have handled it. The thing, if I, I sometimes even get confused myself, I say SFA and I should say SPFL, but SPFL basically were the ones that could, with a resolution to sort of see what was going to happen in the league. So the clubs have now voted for a sort of what the, the 42 member associations have voted for, well, the league can be decided that it can be just given to Celtic because we are 13 points clear. Uh, that the, the board now have the power to do that. Right. And that's what kind of, I think, deep down, Rangers clutching at straws thinking they can still catch us has really annoyed them and I think that's the root of their frustration is right. really that I don't think it's anything to do with any of the reasons that the suits that the suits that sit up in Ibrox have tried to pro- proclaim that they that they think is that they think are the reasons for it they deep down they're just they're just basically sad at their team's capitulation after the, the, the turn of the new year when they were really it was neck it was neck and neck up to christmas and then we just had we just had a whole new level and i think that's the root of the problem to be honest right why is it always sort of like uh celtic and rangers that's like the main enemies in scottish football well hearts and hearts uh Hibernian and and heart of McLodian are both from edinburgh uh, they right. are the sort of Edinburgh derby, and they don't like each other as well. But Celtic and Rangers, it's just be all the other stuff that's thrown into the mix, and, and it's just the two biggest clubs in Scotland. His, right. Well, um, sort of. So when when Rangers became a new club in two thousand and twelve, um, and this is this is this is uh, another story. Rangers were liquidated for uh, basically not being able to pay the tax man enough money. To cut a long story short, there's a lot more story uh, to that story. But, things called EBTs, which they never ever paid back, but yeah. they were demoted and made a new club and had to start from the bottom and work their way back up um, again. Um, so they have basic, they've basically been in our shadow for a decade. So it's kind of, but even their old sort of, the old cause, we would call them their older club, have been um, kind of, like, there was always history between its two biggest teams and, Scottish football tradition, the the history and stuff like that that they that the, the two clubs have always had. And when Rangers went down in two in two thousand and twelve, 
as soon as they get back up, there was a lot of more sort of like the attention was obviously like a lot of people down south were saying, "Oh, you've got Celtic just winning, running, and trouncing in the league all the time," and a lot of people thought Rangers coming back up would would really start restart that up again. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, um, it's kind of Celtic have been just reached a new level in this last um, the, the end of the, the end of that, the last decade, and it's to be. And they've done really, really well. But the reason they're always a big focus is it's the two clubs that draw. And whether they, they like it or not, the two clubs are massive. And it's whether they, it's whether as they draw attention to each other. Yeah. Unfortunately for the rest of Scottish football, they just need to deal with that because it's your two big fish. If you look at Spain, your two big fish there are Barcelona and Real Madrid. Right. Um, and they are the two. But obviously you've got other big clubs in Spain as well. But as soon as you think of Spanish football, you think Barca, Real Madrid. You think of Scottish football. You think you think of Celtic and Rangers yeah. kind of like that. That's the sort of thing I'm I'm trying to hit home. And yeah, yeah. I always make a lot of my Rangers fans pals laugh with the new club argument because they think oh it's still the, the same old club and stuff like that. And do you know something? It's a debate that's never ever that's never mm-hmm. in a million years going to be settled. And um. I've got good pals that are Rangers fans and it's a good laugh to, to bring that um, up now and again and they'll probably be watching this the now if they do going, ah, we're not a new club this, this, that, 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 but that's just part of the sort of, the, uh, the sort of um, I, I hate using the word banter but I can't think of any other word this just, it sounds yeah, a bit sounds like <laughs> heavy, 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 the yeah. sort of camaraderie I like that better, it's the sort of camaraderie <laughs> between, the, between the two fans and it's a thing that kind of lives up to it, but no, without a doubt, the, the, the derby, the, the derby is one of the, the biggest derbies in the world, and it attracts so much attention whenever uh, games are whenever games are played. It's watched on a worldwide basis. Um, no matter, um, no matter. There's people that wake up at six in the morning to watch it when it's a twelve o'clock cl- kick off, mm-hmm. like Glasgow time. Whereas um, there'll be people when I don't know whatever Mexico, Mexico six hours behind. So we use that as an example. Mexico City. Um, would be watching it at that time right. or um, if you want to go six hours in front to somewhere I don't know maybe over sort of to the Middle East idea I don't know maybe even further than that I'm not really sure time zones that way but you would have people watching it at that time as well Where have you travelled to to watch again? Uh, I've been kind of con- uh, Europe is the furthest because it's the Champions League and Europa League you play European teams it's UEFA the um, the sort of European football and government body who commission that. So I've been to places like I've been to places like Italy. I've been to Germany. Germany was amazing. Uh, then uh, recently for Copenhagen, mm-hmm. um, that was absolutely um, fantastic. That's the most recent trip. Copenhagen was amazing. Yeah. I um, uh, so. What the, has a the, better atmosphere? The, 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 I never knew the, the Danish Krona. <laughs> the Danish Krona. I've never had used that before <laughs> when I went to, to Denmark. And uh, again, uh, that was a weird. But I was also in Spain, although uh, for the UEFA Cup final, uh, Seville. My dad was actually at the game. I was in a pram. Um, <laughs> uh, well, not, well, not 2000, 2002, 2003. I was still. I um, just be walk, went walking, but. Right. Uh, Kind of thing, but I was still only two or, two or three uh, years of age. I was I was just learning to walk and stuff like that. And, yeah. Uh, getting bearings about, right that, about me. Um, I never spoke until I was two and a half years old. My dad my dad now maintains that I never shut up after that. Um, so I waited that long and then decided to just never be quiet. So <laughs> I anyway, he was at the, the game in the game in Seville. So Spain kind of would be on on the on the list because I was there, but I don't for the life of me remember. I was going mm. to go to Valencia last year, but. Unique chapped in the door with a lovely assignment and exam accompanying a, 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 a sort of accompany accompanying each other. So mm. unfortunately, I had to prioritise um, uni first, yeah. of course, and um, that was that. But I know I've, I've I've many more times to to come travelling to go and uh, see Celtic. I'm really really look forward to yeah. um, to going in more time than just again when we get out of this lockdown. But with lockdown, I don't know how that. I, obviously, Nicola Sturgeon's announced that gatherings aren't going to be really a thing anytime soon. Mm. She's really said we're going to have to coexist with it. With it, we're going to need to let, 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 find a way to live alongside the virus. I think were the words that she may have used yesterday. Stuff along yeah. those lines. So having sixty thousand people packed into a football, uh, packed into a stadium, mm, yeah. isn't going to be 
I don't think that'll be the norm until at least next year. I don't know what they'll do. I don't know if they'll just have to start the season behind closed doors. But I just pray to God that there was talks of the human, the human trials and the vaccines starting and stuff like that. I hope that the vaccine just gets as as successful and they can start mass producing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, the better we can get back to like normal life and have uh, these events course. again, much better. Yeah. Um, what is a what's a more exciting experience? Is it traveling to these countries and getting to watch the team, or is it staying home and having like that more like uh, closer relationship with the players at home? Um, it's exciting all in to go and see Celtic no matter where you go. Um, the, the the feeling stays the same, and you always support your team goes and. Um, See the game. The, the biggest thing about the European trip is before and after the game when you're out with all the other fans, pub, mm. hitting the pubs, hitting the clubs, yeah. kind of going and enjoying the country, the, the whole city that you're in, and and just enjoying yourself. Going to the games are amazing as well, though. Um, it's great to go and say, oh, there's a game being watched by so many around the world, and I'm I'm there. Yeah, uh, yeah. The behind standing in the the south in the in the Celtic end watching, um. Watching, watching the obviously watching my team play, but again being at home, it's great being at home. You get diff- a lot, of, I get another sort of communities of people yeah. who sit beside at the games. They don't, you get season tickets, so they don't change. You don't sit next to somebody different every game unless you've not got a season ticket. But if you've got a season ticket, the guys next to you got a season ticket. You'll see them every time. You get to know the people around you and stuff like that. Getting you know, a bit about them, what they do, um, just get to yeah. sort of it's a it's whole a, experience I, either way. Yeah, that is so. I. But you don't know what one's like better. If you do, if you do rate one over the other, I, I can't. can't. It's, it's, unless unless you were a football, you would know because yeah, yeah. It's obviously away days are nuts because you're away. You're in the minority of the crowd. The same mm. with domestically. It's great going to away games and that. But at the same time, I, I just love watching the, the team all together. Obviously, atmosphere wise, yeah. you say because you're the away team, you you sing all the time. You would say away games are are really good atmosphere wise. Some home games are. Um, like you've, we've got the, the Green Brigade who will sing all the time, but you've, it's obviously it's the full end singing away games. But then when you've got the bigger games, the whole stadium will join in and stuff like that. But and again, it's not really the whole the whole stadium will join in and, and when the team needs the backing and stuff like that mm-hmm. as well. We were voted a couple of years ago the best fans in the world. Yeah. Celtic fans were voted the best fans in the world in a poll. Uh, so there's no sort of um, there can't be any sort of denying that we are a fantastic set support that we are a fantastic support yeah. and um, and a, a club with lots of history the first the first team within the British Isles to win the European Cup they actually did not I believe I read something not too long ago that actually the first sort of northern hemisphere because it was um, sort of team but I, I don't know I need to look into previous winners or that. I don't know if I too enamoured by that fact. I'll never look at that, but I think we obviously. I think the point whoever was saying that was trying to make was after we won it, then Man United won it, Bayern Munich or we start we won it after that. It's kind of like prog- sort of progression, like you. It was more like Italian teams and stuff like that. Right. Were winning the champ, were winning the, the European Cup. It was at a time with the Champions League now, but we were certainly and as and as stated in complete fact, the first, um, the first team within the British Isles to win the, the, the Champions League back in 1967 in Lisbon. The Lisbon Lions, they get called all all icons, club icons. What is the, uh, what did you say earlier, the Green the Green Brigade? The Green Brigade. What, what's that? It's a, it's a ultras group, they, they call them, they are basically, they, are, they put on displays at games, they sing from minute one to minute 90 and, right. and Aye, that's what they are. They're just they they sit they have their own section at the at, at Celtic Park. It's the safe standing section. And that's what they do. They they uh, travel everywhere with the team as well. And um, so that's like a fear. fan turned up to eleven kind of thing. Aye, eleven kind of thing. But saying that, uh, you don't need to be in the Green Brigade for Celtic to be a way of life for you. It's um, a lot, of, a lot of people. Uh, still, still, a lot of people's way of life. They just like to. They don't they want to take the ultra fanatical approach. They jump about for ninety minutes. And, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, kind of. They, they, they're happy to sit and watch the game, and but yeah. still go to the pub. It's still their thing. It's just, it's still a way of life without. Just a different that, type of way of, of engaging. Ultras, it's just a sort of ultras outlook on it, which um, is just another outlook on it. It's just another right. way that football's kind of um, beamed around at, at the sort of foot, the football and sort of. Uh, 
world evolves. It's just the sort of way it's mm. beamed around the world is through the ultra culture. So the all teams have a like an ultra uh, like, group. Not 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 every single team. Um, it's but it's more teams. of a the best the sort of best example you would look ultra wise is the German fans. They are they are meant Borussia Dortmund's yellow wall is massive. It's the full stand. I, I don't even know what the capacity is, but it's massive. Of just complete, just fans jump about the whole game. <laughs> it's just, but it's the it's called the yellow wall for a reason. If you ever look it up on YouTube after it, yeah. you'll see. I'm interested. <laughs> I'll take a note. Yeah. <laughs> um, you look up the game. They, they some of the Celtic fan yeah. stuff as well, and the whole stadium singing "You'll Never Walk Alone" before before the um, the game and stuff like that is brilliant. So like, there's a lot of things associated with like a team. So like, obviously, like Celtic has like. Obviously, out with its logo, it's heavily associated with green. So, like, as I can see, your room's green. Is there, like, <laughs> how far does that go for you? Like, would you not drive a blue car? Um, I, this may sound like me trying to sound like a politician and dodge the bullet <laughs> here, but I don't actually like the colour blue anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know it's the colour of Scotland, but I don't really like I I, I like to wear more, like, green clothes and stuff like that. I, I know... I know what you're trying to say, like, would you wear only wear green clothes or would you not buy, like, blue? of course there is certain things that you need to buy that are, are blue and people do, like, blue jeans and stuff like that, I wouldn't mm. go spray paint my, my jeans green, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. not, I'm not trying to, like, I know what you mean, I would, uh, a lot of people, I like, you would say, if you were walking by and you see somebody going to a game, you would stare at them and see them dressed in green, mm. or that would be their dress sense, or on the other side, like, Rangers dressed, fans dressed in blue, or blue shoes and, and stuff like that, but... It's not really one of the the things that you. Uh, Do you think there maybe that. is like a sort of subconscious approach to things? Like, if you did maybe. see something green, I, you'd I, I, I get what you're saying, and and you and I, I understand. I know what you're saying, and you're actually right. When you are saying there is the subconscious approach that I, I would have my room painted green before it's painted blue. Right. That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I. I, well, in that case, yeah, there are certain things, but yeah. again, there are certain things that like you can't go spray paint your jeans blue. Yeah. So if you had the option, sorry, green, can you can't go spray paint blue jeans green. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I can, I can totally get that. Um, yeah, yeah, there... I, I, my room and stuff like that would definitely, you would go, oh, he's a Celtic fan. I've been <laughs> saying that. Obviously, the Met without the memorabilia and the clothes that way as well more seem to be orientated around uh, green, but my, the, my cars, um, it's bullet grey, so it's not really... It's <laughs> not in the, that sort that sort of thing. Out with sort of like the actual like going to the games or going to like um I guess maybe like going to like a sort of Celtic pub, but that's kinda of like something that's quite interesting to me, like how it can sort of transcend the actual game itself. Is there a lot of other things like that where you don't need to go to the game to be involved in sort of like the club in a sense? Like going to a, a pub. Yeah, you've got this. You've got supporters clubs where you can have like fundraising nights, speakers nights where you get ex professionals right. or current players coming and speaking. Um, a good things charity as well. A lot of charity days and stuff like that. Right. Where you'll get charity games or charity sport like fundraisers or race like that can be orientated around Celtic. You'd think of anything you've really been to party wise, and you could have a Celtic party sort of. Similarly, along with that uh, sort mm. of uh, those lines, well, so I'll probably as an example, like, uh, just a, a, a somebody's sort of party that we'd have, you could have a party for like celebrating the anniversary of something, right, like right. supporters club celebrating their fifth, like their 50th anniversary. Yeah. So that sort of they sort that sort of runs in line, it's all inspired by at the, at the heart of it with Celtic as well, and that is a thing uniquely that happens with them. Um, Celtic and Rangers actually as well that it's again maybe not in as big as maybe happens at other clubs but not as big a scale mm-hmm. but there's hundreds of supporters clubs for both sides that go to all the games and stuff like that and um, and that's just a different sort of side of things as well but they all drink all drink the same pub or, or pubs within the same vicinity or, mm-hmm. and they'll all maybe meet up and stuff like that but yeah that's what that is um so like I know that things like uh, orange walks and stuff like that like occur and take place and stuff. What are your opinions I, on that? I was waiting for this uh, article. <laughs> um, I was actually I was actually uh, surprised it never cropped up when I was the religion bit was there, but um, <laughs> I think they're bad dated. Yeah. They, there's the hub, the hubs walk and the orange walk are sort of what 
look, I have things that I, I haven't to be, and I'll be completely honest. This isn't me speaking from another from my own one Celtic side. I haven't actually really witnessed any Hibs walks. I don't know uh, really why. Um, it's just because you kind of hear that there's a lot of or, or orange walks around sort of summertime and stuff like that. And I just think that we don't. That a lot of Rangers fans are of the opinion we don't really need them. Right. They just can go, they're, they're backdated, they're talking about things that happened 310 years ago, right. and kind of thing, and the, the two walks just, they can kind of just leave it, but it's what, it's what a lot of people are sort of intertwined with them, but I really think that they're, 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 they're backdated and they just, um, they can move <laughs> forward from it, because they bring a lot, they, they do bring about a lot of trouble, mm. uh, you notice that a lot of times, especially with an orange walk, a lot of people will, um, will Fall with the the and I've actually this is me speaking to a couple of Rangers fans. I've, obviously, I don't know because I'm not. Um, that's not really what I think that I do, and mm. I try to stay away from it. Um, right. And I've said to them, I, I, let's see. We, we, I don't know. If, but a lot of them, to be fair, my pals are Rangers fans. Don't bother with either. Do yeah. the orange? Do the orange? What? But they turn they turn around and and say that. Oh, listen. Um, it's the following of it is obviously still big, but it wasn't as big as it used to be. Like, it's dropped down, you used to get 100 people falling at the Rangers top, mm. at tops and that, but now it's kind of back died away a wee bit. Yeah. But in terms, of, in terms of it, I think it just needs and banned altogether, to yeah. be honest. It just brings about trouble. And we just need to listen, let them, if people want to have their beliefs and they want to sing their songs, they can keep them within their clubs right, and stuff yeah. like that. Because Celtic fans will, will do the same, sing their songs and stuff like that as well, but I don't think we need to parade take, it on the street. Uh, on the street. And the worst thing you can be is stuck behind one because they're slower than a week in the jail and you <laughs> and you can't and you can't like obviously people walking you'll try to drive and people yeah. are walking the road. That goes for any march, that doesn't matter what kind of march it is, getting stuck behind a march is absolute torture. <laughs> and you just need to do a U turn and forget about that. Yeah. Um, forget about where you're going or find an alternate route. That's probably that's the joke that they say is you always be stuck behind any sort of march, never mind. Mm. Uh, n- never mind any any other sort of thing, but you don't want, never mind any other sort of road closure or that. But you don't want to be stuck behind people walking because you've got people walking, and basically yeah. you know that the road isn't closed. And if they just move out the way, you can get get can past them. But um, but that's obviously there's more than there's more than uh, the hips walks and orange marches that stop the that stop the um the, the stop traffic for walking. There's other marches that do that as well. But just in terms of bringing about trouble and that to consign these sort of religious marches they don't, they don't even really, I don't even know if they are if they're, they're probably the sort of to consign the sort of um, the orange marches and the sort of any religious connotation and to consign mm-hmm. the Republic the, uh, the, the Hibs what it's called the Republican marches which to be fair there isn't in Glasgow I've not really came across mm-hmm. as many of to cons- just to consign these to the past within the city will kind of just make but will just help everybody keep the songs that they sing in their clubs away from whatever. And if they want to do that, that's within their own space. Same with the Celtic fans, because yeah. obviously the things like that. Um, obviously, with all the other history stuff happening in Ireland, there's songs that will come out from both sides. If you keep them in the past, then or still keep it. But if I, if you keep the marches and stuff like that in the past, then it just sort of disrupts. Because um, I just think the marches can be consigned to the past. To be honest. Yeah. So it's kind of like just you can sing your songs and, and do your march as long as you kind of do it in your own space. Don't try and interrupt other people's yeah. lives, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I kind of think obviously the practical approach of a march is to walk about the street. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. The pra- practical approach it wouldn't be kind of you would be it would be a, is this the way I'm in a little video if you were in the if you were in a, a hall doing it <laughs> kind of just marching in the spot for. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> that's but what I'm saying is it's like just it's like having to be able to hear the marches and, and stuff like that, it's a kind of a thing you just you just want them gone to yeah. the, the past kind of thing and that's kind of my view on it. Just marches, marches, just forget about them, ban them and then... Just move um, on, progress. Move on, evolve, progress yeah. with life. And if, again, if there's pubs and clubs, if you want to sing your songs and proclaim your songs, then that's fine. It's in their own space. Nobody stops them in their own space within four walls of their clubs or their house. Yeah. And they do get these songs get dragged into sta- to stadiums as well. Yeah. And, sang, and get sang, sang games. The Scottish, the 
police and the SFA and the rest tried to roll out the offensive behaviour at Football Act, but they kind of it was really bad against football fans because they were starting to really take it too liberally. They were just filming people during games and stuff like that, innocent people. Mm. And it was a good idea to get rid of that act because the act wasn't thought out properly. It was kind of rushed in right. and passed Parliament. And it was a good, it was well repealed. It got repealed and it's, it's kind of just people getting kind of things they didn't do right, or right. Just, like getting filmed during games and stuff like that and yeah. it just kind of wasn't really fair in every single fan so the, the songs get sang at both sides all the up, 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 all, up during all games is sort of sectarian songs and stuff like that and it's just a part of, it's, it's a part of the game now right uh, I, up here a lot of, I've been a lot of calls for it to stop and stuff like that but there's no change in certain individuals in, um, in, the, in the world and that's just the, the they will remain to become a part of the the songs for very for a long time to um, to come up. I, I, that's my opinion that I think they'll stay about. Whether they do or not is uh, a different story. Awesome. Uh, I feel like I've pretty much covered every question that I was thinking of. Um, is there anything I, you want to kind any of? Any other about? questions about other football and the world, or any other sort of questions about me before I go? I'll happily answer them about Spanish, about my uni or whatever, it's up, I don't mind. Yeah, Just, I mean, you said you learned uh, Italian and Spanish. Yes, I did. I, 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 I did at uni, actually. I, I basically took the Italian, I walked in off the street approach. Right. Um, went to uni, and I didn't actually know that this idea was that uh, oh, you have to basically be, um, that you have to pick three subjects you go in first year uni, um, and basically, um, so you, so I had to go, well, I've got education, I have Spanish, I have to pick something else. I don't like politics, I don't know what social policy is, <laughs> um, I don't have any intention of finding out what it is. I detest history, because it bores me having to learn about king this, queen that, this, that and the rest of it. Um, it's just pointless and I've no idea about why it's relevant. The only decent bit of history, in my opinion, it's maybe interesting is the world wars. Um, and stuff like that. I don't really like anything else. They get. I think you can do like Irish history. That's interesting as well. But I'm talking about going way back to sick, like fifteen and fourteen hundreds, where these like King something the second and all that. I, just, I don't like that mm-hmm. Run nonsense. So that get banned as well. Uh, English. I, I, after higher English, it was a due to English. So that was enough of that. And, uh, so basically, I, 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 after going through all the choices and basically giving reasons why I couldn't really between French and Italian. I, Oh, I, I didn't really like no I just that was the kind of thing about French so I didn't really wanted to learn that so Italian for me went I can't actually find any reason why I won't do Italian so let's try it and I'm blessed that I've great tutors in all of my uni courses I've never had a problem with anybody at uni so far thankfully yeah awesome and, and, and Italian was great started from basic scratch learning how to spell my name in the first class of telling the teacher what Italian words I knew like pizza, pasta, <laughs> child <laughs> kind of thing. Um, that, was, that was good but no um, uh, but then to kind of get into a second a second year uni level yeah. all in the streets of two years mm. and obviously Spanish is completely different my Spanish journey started on a stage in the Costa del Sol holiday village and um, <laughs> Counting to, counting to 10 through a microphone in front of a room of people in Spanish mm. um, so that's where my journey started for Spanish, I just always loved it even in yeah. school, I was buzzing to go to high school to be able to do it because, and I was shot through first and second year, not dropped my mark in any tests at all and I got to, to uni and it's just took off, been able to talk it all, like speak the language all day with everybody, with native people, meeting people through Spanish communities mm. and stuff like that, travelling to Spain and speaking to people when you go. Yeah. Same with Italy as well, when I went to Rome, I was talking in Italian away and it was great. And when going to Spain, but just talking to people and, and, under, and, under, and them understanding you and you understanding yeah. back in a different language. Like, and they love it because it's an eye-opener for them all. Mm. I remember a, a taxi driver saying to me, well, I, you you all come here as I'm from, um, not you personally, but you guys all come here mm. and expect us to speak Spanish. Yeah. What would happen if the shoe was in the other foot? And that opened that, my eyes. That was an eye-opener for me. So, to an example, right, see if you want to go, when lockdown finishes, you go to, want to go to a nice pub restaurant, right? Just a, one that's not in town because the, this will maybe answer the question anyway, but maybe even some in town as well. And you go to a restaurant, maybe, I don't know, where, where do you stay, Tom? 
Uh, I stay basically like bang between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Right, so with, middle of nowhere. Uh, right, so I would would I count Cumbernauld close? Or yeah. maybe further? Everywhere is pretty much close and far away equally. So right, yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll take Cumbernauld, right? Um, we'll we'll take we'll take Cumbernauld, right? And uh, that's where that's where we kind of we think, right? right. Uh, go out a wee pub in Cumbernauld. I'm going to go and get something to eat a pub grub, right? right. If you open the menu, you understand it, right? Yep. It's all in English, yep. right? If you go to Spain, go to restaurants, the menu is in English and Spanish. Can you imagine going to, a Span- going to Spain and the whole menu just being in Spanish? Spanish. But in theory, it's their country. Yeah. It should be. But the amount of people, and that's what they say, like, you expect us to have everything yeah. for you in English over here. You expect this, you expect that. Mm. And it really, this guy was really pissed, really pissed off, by the way. Yeah. But it was, he was livid, really, really. And he, he, he was... I really respect someone like you who comes and try and speaks their language and and immerse it. And that's but get, at the end of the day, on the flip side, the tourism market in Spain's great, and it's a thing that they've took under their, their wing. The like, we put menus in and and I know it means that yeah. our third highest economy contri- con- like contributor yeah. thrives every year, and that's um, that's a that's a big part of lockdown as well as the economy will really mm-hmm. suffer so I think they're going to have to find a strategy to lift it within the next few months for economical reasons Yeah, I really think that's a, another sort of side but that's something that's boring and polit- like, not boring lock- like lockdown I really hope the coronavirus goes away but I mean politics in general I hate politics mm-hmm. whatsoever so to, back to it's obviously sort of Spanish away for that tangent that was the idea just being able to yeah, learn yeah. the culture going and communicate and, and, you can actually and being able to them. listen to football games in Spanish as well and yeah. radio and, and listen to different do different things and stuff like that it's really really I'm, I'm, I'm I really I think that I've cherished being able to a skill I really enjoy doing is that and then education um, the, the bit what I guess you can guess the first question I always get asked is oh do you want to be a teacher yeah. Um, and I say, uh, well, no, it's more edu- I don't do primary ed, I do like, um, education studies, kind of. Like, and it was more picked to detract, like, sort of take the sort of pressure away. Like, because if I picked law in Spanish, law would get the big yeah. focus. Law is yeah. law. That was another reason law is saying you haven't learned to become a lawyer. You've got, <laughs> you've got so many different, everybody yeah. fancy the courtrooms and stuff like that. But you think about it, you've got, you must have went law, you know, for houses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, people like wills and stuff like that. You would have to learn about all that stuff as well. And I don't think you could just say, oh, somebody's done something in the street, mm-hmm. take it to court. Yeah. It's not, it's not what everybody's on TV. There's, and I only learned this through talking to some of the people who do law. There's so many different types of law that are, like property law is unbelievable. So that would take too much away from Spanish. Whereas I wanted Spanish to be my number one focus. Right. And, and that's just but strictly you need to take 120 credits a year, 60 credit semester. So it's kind of three subjects with classes in it. What um, is it you want to do with Spanish? I could do interpretation, translation. I would really like to get my coaching badges in Spain football coaching, so that language right. would help there. Yeah. But I can do that when I go away. Anyway, I can make a good, I can put a good dent into that. But interpretation, translation, I could become a, a teacher. Who knows? Who knows which round the corner? I've yeah. learned that really, really quickly in life. That especially with the personal experience of losing my mum and stuff like that, it was a shock, shock experience. Um, just one, what going to bed one night, the next morning, basically waking up and having to go up and down for the hospital and stuff like that and eventually she passed away in hospital but who knows what life brings around the corner and that's why I, I, my advice to anybody else would be live in the moment don't um, don't kind of be like what if if you're an athlete if you just take every opportunity you've got where you've still got it uh, because sooner or later opportunities will, will, dis- will disappear from you you don't want to be 20-30 years down the line looking back and going if I was younger, I wish I did this, that, and the rest that you want to look back in your life and go, I've been out with my pals, enjoyed myself, I've tried new things. That's why I go on all these, that, that's why I, I always go away to try and go away and explore new countries as well, even out with the football aspect of it, try and explore things and, and stuff like that. Just to say, oh, I've done that, I don't want to get, I don't want to, get to, to being older and going, I don't want to do that, but I thankfully think I've already, and I've still got hundreds of memories in front of me, I've already created so many good memories in the short space of time that I think about it compared to other people that have been here. Mm. Honestly, thank you so much for doing this. Like, I feel like 
a lot of people can take a lot of interest and in, in, like motivational like things from this. Yeah. Um, you're a great to talk to. Aye, thanks a lot. See you, beautiful.